Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Welcome to Historic Fort Wayne and the Barracks Building here. We want to say thanks to the Historic Fort Wayne Coalition for helping us get access and be able to shoot episodes in this great historic site. Today we're going to talk about another game that soldiers might have used to fill up their time uh, in either a garrison like this or in camp. And the game is cribbage. You know, I came up playing cribbage as a kid, and when I went to the 1864 edition of Hoyle's Games, we found some differences, and that's what we want to talk about today. Not only teach you the game, but teach you the game the soldiers would have learned. So, uh, cribbage is a game played during the Civil War to 61 points. My modern board actually goes to 120, so that'll be a little bit different. The 61 are 60 pegs around and then 61st for the win. John and I are going to play, this is a two-handed version. John has his side of the board to move his pegs and then jump into the 61st hole. I have my side. In order to score, the pegs move. And the way to do that is to take the peg from the rear and move forward the number of spaces that you would score when it's time. We'll talk about that as we go. Now, another change in cribbage during the Civil War is the five cards that are dealt are dealt all at once. Now we're actually going to make what is essentially three hands to go to the dealer, uh, that is the main hand and what we call the crib or cr the crib of cribbage. John and I are each going to pick two cards to discard. At this point, let's, let's talk scoring because it's time to think about strategy. When you score after the hand is played, you are looking to make either any combination of 15 points, you are looking to make a what we would call today a run, which during the Civil War was called a sequence. You can either make that a three or four card. So say a two, a three, a four, or a two, three, four, and five. Ace counts as one, so it goes at the bottom. You can also make a flush, which is either three cards, or we'll see where you get a fourth card from. So you can either do a flush or a full flush, which is four cards. We'll show you where that fourth card is in a second. And then there is a pair. Today we call it three of a kind. During the Civil War it was called pair royal, and then four of a kind was called double pair royal. Jacks are gonna be worthwhile, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. John and I now need to go ahead and get rid of things. John's trying to remember that he doesn't want me to make flushes or runs or anything of 15. He's being careful as he discards not to allow that. Now we said that you could do a full flush or you could do a run of four. I've only got three cards. What gives? We need to get that next card available. John, as the elder hand, the non-dealer, will pick up any number of cards off the deck as long as it's three or more. I will pick up the next card and when John replaces it, put it upright. We are playing uh, with, the with the ten of club being turned up. If a jack had been turned up there, that would be called the heels. Uh, or his heels, and as the dealer, I would take two points for that. We now know that we have one more way to score, and that is a point for what's called the knob. And in our case, it is that will be if we find the in scoring that either of us has the jack of clubs, that's the knob. We'll see what happens. Our goal now is to play to 30, as close to 31 as possible, which will stop play. John as the elder hand plays first. Face cards are worth 10, and John says 10. I will drop 4 for 14, 5 for 19, 10 for 29, and then 1 for 30. Now my next card is a 6. I cannot make 31 without going over, so I have to say go, and John will take 1 point for the go. Wherever go is, that ends play in Civil War cribbage. All right, so John got to 30. He got one for the go because I couldn't play my six and it's now time to score the hand. John as the elder hand scores first. Okay, I'm gonna go 15 for two and then 15 for four. Which is two for each 15 and when you add, you say the number cumulatively in cribbage. Okay, and then nothing for this. So John takes 15 for four. What he does is he takes his rearmost pin advances and counts the number of points he just got. I have a pair for two. And so I will jump my forward pin and go forward two to score if I don't pick it up and throw it. Now as the dealer I said there was an extra way to score and that's called the crib. 
I'll put my old hand there. I will pick up the crib and we're going to do exactly the same thing here. I have a pair of eights for two. And John will now become the dealer. I'll become the elder hand. He'll shuffle and we'll play another hand. Now I have to remember this time, I'm the elder hand. I don't get the crib. I really want to make sure I don't give anything to John. That pair of eights in the last, I gave myself because I knew I could take the pair. I will pick anything more than three cards up. John takes the next one and we will play based on hearts. 10. Uh, let's go 19. 28. 31. 31 for two. Play stops because we've made 31. John takes two points for getting 31 exactly. I will go ahead and score first. I have two jacks for a pair for two. We have an eight here plus the seven for, fit for two, 15 for two. And, and then I should have a sequence here of seven, eight, nine, four, three. So for five total? For five total. Now if John had had all four in a sequence, it would, he would have scored four points for the sequence. We have six, we have 10, 13, 15 for two, mm -hmm. and another pair for two more for four total. Give Cribbage a try. You can find Cribbage boards locally or you can find vintage Cribbage boards. Thanks to Tom Burke for lending us an original, which is just a great way to find a connection to history. We hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for spending your time with Civil War Digital Digest. If you've liked the episode, hit like and share it out. I'm sure there's a lot more people who enjoy finding a connection to the Civil War through games. We'll see you soon. <laughs>